The NFL season is midway through it right now, and let's talk about some head coaches because, listen, we understand that some of these head coaches in the National Football League, they're starting to hit the skid. So let's talk about which names around the league could be, uh, could be uh, fired here before the end of the 2023 NFL season. Before I go over five names, I think are definitely in big trouble at this point. Make sure you get in the comments section and let me know which NFL head coach should be fired next. We've already seen Josh McDaniels get fired by the Las Vegas Raiders. Let me know down in the comments who you think is next. And that, that guy that might be next could be Bill Belichick. Yes, that's right. The guy that many people consider to be the greatest head coach in the history of the National Football League, six-time champion as a head coach. According to reports right now, Robert Kraft, the owner of the Patriots, is considering firing Billy B here if they, if they lose this week uh, in Germany against the Indianapolis Colts. So that would be absolutely crazy if this, that ended up happening. I mean, a guy that has won six Super Bowls for this organization getting fired, but not only just getting fired, getting fired in the middle of a season would be something completely unprecedented. And you know Bill Belichick, if he still wants to coach, he's going to be possibly the number one guy on the market next year. I know there's guys like Ben Johnson, some of these other guys that are going to be uh, big-time names. Eric Bieniemy might be another one in there. But Bill Belichick, if he's available, I think most teams are going to be making a call trying to get him to be their next head coach. And you know what? I think that where I'm standing with Belichick right now, we all know that the New England Patriots are struggling. But the question is why? Is it because Belichick is a bad coach? Or, you know, is it because this team isn't built in an effective way? And I would argue it's because of the team building, right? I think that Coach Belichick is one of the best to ever do it when it comes to getting people to buy in, to keep people focused throughout this season, to keep people invested in the locker room and play for each other. And then also, he's a defensive genius. And he's, he's even showed over the last couple of years, he has modernized the NFL defense, right? Lots of these defensive coordinators, they find something that works for them one or two years, and then they stick with that no matter what their personnel is. That's not Belichick, man. He kind of conforms his, uh, you know, his personnel to the scheme, his scheme to the players, and that's the way you got to do it as a defensive play caller in the National Football League. But he's not a GM, right? I really think it's really, really tough for any individual to be an NFL head coach and be on top of everything in the front office. It's just too difficult. There's way too much on somebody's plate. And I think with someone like Belichick, you know, it's definitely hurt him as he's uh what since he's been moved to GM so let me know what you guys think down there in the comment section should head coaches in the National Football League ever have full control of the front office I understand that Belichick is, is, is arguably one of the best of all time if not the best of all time but in my opinion guys I'm going to answer no to this question but let me know what you guys think down there in the comments and this is going to be the pinned comment on today's show so YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds when that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's 10 question. Now, the next guy that I think could be gone here pretty soon is Matt Eberflus, Chicago Bears. And this guy just seems lost at this point, man. I, I, I watched his press conference yesterday. He didn't even know answers to freaking questions when it comes to the injury report. I mean, that's just kind of uh, basic stuff when it comes to being a head coach in the National Football League. And let's just face it, people. This guy is a joke. I think he had one really good season as a defensive coordinator there in Indy. Uh, you know, they, they forced a lot of turnovers that year. And Eberflus looked like he could be somebody that could be a head coach. But now, ever since he's been brought to Chicago, he hasn't been able to develop uh, an offensive vision. Justin Fields has not done well under uh, his administration to this point. And the Bears' offense, man, I, I think that it really does need an offensive coach to usher in the next era of, of Bears football. I know that this is a defensive, uh, you know, centric uh, culture here in Chicago with 85 Bears, you know, monsters of the midway. We play defense in the Windy City, all these different things, right? But I think that whether it's Justin Fields, that quarterback in the future, or a co rookie quarterback next year, I want an offensive head coach in there to really foster the development of whoever that quarterback is. So I don't want to go defense again. I want to go get a Ben Johnson. I want to go get somebody else to be the new head coach that is uh, an offensive-minded guy in Chicago so you can usher in that next era of Bears football. Now coming up here is Brandon Staley, Chargers head coach, in trouble. I'm going to let you know what I think here coming up after the break here, but I want to tell you about today's sponsor, 
at Prize Picks. And let me tell you, man, this app, ever since we started using it here at Chat Sports, ever since we started partnering with them, I haven't been able to put it down. It's absolutely fantastic. And if you want to spice up your game days this NFL season, get started with Prize Picks today. It is a skill based, real money daily fantasy sports game. And if you're looking for a more fun way to spend your game days this year, look no further than Prize Picks. And you might be asking yourself, how does it work, Jack? Well, here's how you pick two to six players, and if they'll go for more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can even win 25 times your money on any entry. And let me tell you something about this app, guys. If you guys know ball, you're going to make some money on this app. So here's essentially how it works. You're going to go on the app, and they've got all these different categories on there. Passing yards, passing touchdowns, receiving yards, any statistic that you can think of. And they got a bunch of players on there, and you can choose more or less. And all you have to do is pick two to six players, and you can win money based on that. So if you know ball, and you, you, and, and you know football as much as uh, we do here at Chat Sports, you can make some money on prize picks today, and you can check it out now at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a deposit match up to $100 today. At prize picks, you aren't competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, that are just looking to take advantage of you. With prize picks, it takes less than 60 seconds to make your picks. So get started right away. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use our code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code CLNS at prizepicks.com slash CLNS for a deposit match up to $100 today. So now let's talk about Brandon Staley because I think, you know, the it's, it's about damn time for him to get this team not only to the playoffs, but to start winning in the playoffs, right? It's year three. And the expectations have been really high for this organization for pretty much Staley's entire tenure here in Los Angeles. And time and time again, year after year, this team seems to underperform those expectations. And it may be playoffs or bust for Brandon Staley moving forward. Now, over the last six weeks or, or over the last six games, they're four and two. They've gotten back to 500. Justin Herbert really seems to be clicking in Kellen Moore's system here. So who knows? You know, Los Angeles could absolutely fix this thing and get into the AFC playoff picture. The seventh spot in, uh, you know, in the AFC playoff picture right now is definitely up for grabs. I could totally see Los Angeles making it back to the playoffs this year. But if Brandon Staley can't do that, he might be gone, people. Well, let me know what you guys think down there in the comment section. Will the Los Angeles Chargers make it back to the postseason here in 2023? Type P if you think they're a playoff team or type M if you think they're going to miss it. Another guy that I think is probably on the hot seat right now, Todd Bowles. And this is his second stint as an NFL head coach. Of course, he was the former head coach of the New York Jets, never really got things going. And now this is year two in Tampa Bay, and it's only gotten worse. They underperformed expectations with Tom Brady last year. And now here in year two, it's even worse for, uh, for Todd Bowles and company there in Tampa. The offense can't run or pass the football effectively. The defense is all right. Todd Bowles... You know, he's done a good job scheming things up for this defense this year. But overall, man, it's been two years now. You haven't been able to figure out the offense. If this team continues to sputter moving forward, watch out, because I think the Bucs are going to try to go to an offensive head, co uh, head coach moving forward uh, because that's, a, that's exactly what they need, right? Baker Mayfield is not going to be their long-term starter, franchise quarterback here, all right? They're going to bring in a free agent, trade for a big name, or they're going to draft a new quarterback next year. And really, when it comes to developing these quarterbacks, you want an offensive head coach in there. You look at the numbers for, for, for quarterbacks that are drafted by defensive head coaches versus offensive head coaches. The ones that are drafted by offensive head coaches tend to do way better. They hit way more often because they have that one-on-one -on -one uh, uh, connection with each other, more connected to the team, more connected to the offense. I really think it's important for Tampa Bay to try to find an offensive uh, head coach here moving into the future. Then last guy on my list here, Ron Rivera, Washington Commanders head coach. And just like Brandon Staley, you know, Ron Rivera, you know, he's been here a number of years to this point. He's missed the playoffs last two years. And they have a new ownership group there in Washington. Josh Harris, Magic Johnson. These guys don't owe Ron Rivera anything. So this is really the year. You know, if he misses the playoffs for the third straight year, I think that he's going to be gone. I think they're going to try to find their guy. But it's Ron's job this year 
to prove that he is their guy moving into the future. If you make the playoffs, I think he's safe for at least another year. Sam Howell's looking pretty good. They just got a win last week against the Patriots. If they can beat the Seahawks this week and get back to 500, who knows? I mean, the seventh seed in the NFC playoff picture, completely wide open at this point in the year. So it's it's not over for the Commanders at this point in the season. But if they don't make the playoffs, I think you can kiss Ron Rivera goodbye. Now, some honorable mentions here. Arthur Smith and Brian Dable are some other coaches that I think could absolutely get fired. Now, Brian Dable, he's coming off a Coach of the Year performance. I, I think one year removed from that, getting fired is a bit of a stretch. I don't think the Giants are going to do that. I think they're going to give him one more shot with a new QB next year, probably a draft pick because you're already going to be paying Daniel Jones a ton of money to be your backup next year. And then Arthur Smith, I think Arthur Smith gets a bad rap. The, uh, the, the, the roster hasn't been there for him his entire time there in Atlanta. He needs to get the right quarterback in there. Desmond Ritter has not worked out. Taylor Heineke is not going to be a long-term option. I would still probably at this point give him one more year, but would it be super surprising if Arthur Blank decided to go in a different direction? I can't say it'd shock me. But let me know down there in the comments section, is there any other NFL head coach that should get fired before the end of the season? Who did I miss? Let me know down there in the comments section. Uh, and, and put some names down there. I think I'm going to see some pretty interesting names when I check the comments later. And that'll be it for today's show, people. Really do appreciate all of your support. Make sure you click that subscribe button right now. And until next time, guys, peace.